This is the TV Ear speaker. It's very easy to install. You only need to connect one cord to the back of it. The cord that's needed should have a label that says for speaker. Plug the larger end of this cord into any electrical outlet near where you sit down to watch television. The other end plugs into the back of the TV or speaker labeled as power. Place the TV or speaker with an arm's length of where you sit down to watch television so you can easily reach the volume dial on the front. For the best audio reception, make sure the circular disc on top of the speaker, also known as the receiver, is exposed and out in the open. Turn the volume dial on the front of the speaker clockwise. When the blue light glows, the speaker is turned on. Turn the knob all the way counterclockwise to turn it off. The knob not only turns the speaker on and off, but it also controls the volume. To hear the television through the TV or speaker, proceed with installing the transmitter. This is the digital TV ears transmitter. The most ideal location for the transmitter is at least three to five feet off the ground with the logo facing toward the viewer. This gives you the best reception. To begin, the TV ears needs to be plugged into an electrical outlet, preferably one near the television. Take the AC adapter, also known as a power cord, and plug it in. The other end of the AC adapter plugs into the back of the transmitter in the blue circle labeled as DC-12V. Don't be alarmed by all the different wires that are included. You will not need all of them. In the end, you only need the AC adapter and one audio cord. If you own digital TV ears and you have a flat screen television, the majority of the time you'll need to plug into the television using an optical cord. This cord has a single black end on each end. First, remove the clear caps off of both ends of the optical cord. Second, plug either end of the cord into the TV ears transmitter where the green square is. It's labeled as digital audio in. The cord only fits in one way, so don't force it in. The other end of the audio cord plugs into the back of the television. The port is labeled either as digital audio out, optical audio out, or rarely it might be called SPDIF. Just like before, it only fits in one way. Once the optical cord is connected, then you will not need any of the other wires. If the television does not have this port, or if it's circular in shape instead of square, Try plugging into your cable box or satellite box instead, if you have one. If you still can't find an optical port to plug into, or if something else is already plugged into it, you may try plugging in with a different audio cord. Try the RCA cord first. The double end, which is red and black, needs to plug into the back of the television. You need to look for a pair of colored ports, one red and one white, directly next to each other. There may be more than one pair, but it must specifically be labeled as audio out. If it's only labeled as audio or audio in, it will not work. Once you've located the ports, plug the red into red and black into white. The other end of the RCA cord, which is green, needs to go into the back of the TV ears transmitter. Look for the yellow circle labeled as analog audio in and plug it in tightly. Not every television has a red and white audio out. Sometimes it has a single port instead. If you see a single port that says audio out, or if you see a headphone icon on the port, you'll need to use the 3.5 millimeter cord instead. One end goes into the single port on the television. You'll need to push it in tightly. The other end of the 3.5 millimeter cord, which is also green, needs to go into the back of the TV ears transmitter. Look for the yellow circle labeled as analog audio in and plug it in tightly. Note, if the port is a headphone jack, which shows a headphone icon, the television sound will mute. 
you will only be able to listen to sound through the TVer's headset. If you can't reach the back of your television, if you're unable to locate the appropriate spot to plug into, or if you don't want your television to mute by plugging into a headphone jack, you may also plug the TV ears into your cable box or satellite box if you have one. Finally, if none of the audio cords included are an option, you may need a different cord entirely. If your television, cable box, or satellite box only has a circular port labeled as digital audio out or coaxial, and none of the other cords are able to connect, you will need a coaxial audio cord, which is not included. It may be purchased from most electronic stores. On the back of the TV or speaker, there's a blue bass knob. Adjust this to the bass level that you prefer. For private listening, the TV or speaker has two headphone jacks on the front, so up to two people can listen. Simply plug in your wired earbuds or headphones into it, and all the sound from the speaker will go into your earbuds or headphones instead. Alternatively, the TV or speaker can be used for other devices besides the television, as long as it has a headphone jack. This means it can connect with certain cell phones, music players, computers, and tablets. To do this, you'll need to use the 3.5 millimeter audio cord, which has a single green end on both ends. One end of this cord plugs into the back of the TV or speaker into the port labeled as music. The other end plugs into the device you want to listen to that has a headphone jack.